Hey everyone, it's Josh, Jay Vintage on the Minis, Orlando, Florida. Uh, so in this video I'm going to work on an engine that was sent to me and supposedly has no spark. The goal is just to get it running. I'm not trying to dig into it too far, just kind of troubleshoot it and uh, fix whatever like peripherally I can and get it running if that's something that can be done on this particular engine. So I'll get that out of the cooler and then we'll take a look at that and kind of follow along as I troubleshoot. Uh, and then my stands that I'm trying to push, not to sell to you guys, but just the idea of what I use for stands. Uh, I'm opening up another Rockwell jaw stand here. I'll show you kind of what I do to just prepare it for the slip-in tool. But I'm going to use it this time as an engine stand. Not basically how it comes, just, you know, this is free package. It's only two parts. This is your main uh, head tube here with the clamp system from the jaw stand. So all I'm going to do to get it prepped is take two bolts out. You take this this bolt out that on the, the clamp system and then this second bolt here. We'll just look at these, like I said, these two parts so it's as easy as taking that knob off, pushing out your bolt. millimeter bolt and uh, nut all right so you'll just save that for later you can run your bolt back through it and keep that on the side of your garage or in your closet and then uh, basically I'm gonna go ahead and just stand together. Alright, and then I have that slip-in part that's going to go here. I'll show you that for the engine mount. And that's it. That's basically the breakdown of the Rockwell jaw stand to get ready to use it with these Honda bikes. This is the slip-in part, just a long extension tube that is close tolerance to the inner diameter of this tube. Slips right in. It's not going to go anywhere, rotate, and then you got the holes that mount at the foot peg area on the bottom of your engines. So here's the engine I'll be working on. I already opened it up and kind of inspected the package when it arrived just for damage, but I didn't look any closer on it. So we're going to go through this like real time. Uh, you know, I'm not going to edit anything out. Uh, I'll just kind of go through my procedure for troubleshooting this stuff. So we got a Z50. Uh, it's a Z50R engine. It's still six volt set up. I don't know what year it exactly it was from, but it's got the only the uh, ignition coil, no lighting set up. I can right off the bat see he's got a uh, Chinese jug on it, and um, he's giving me a import Chinese carburetor to use, and uh, he gave me his his coil to test with. So I'll go ahead and get this on the stand and just start going through you know the first initial basics, uh, see if I can get some spark and then work on from there. It's a little dirty. Uh, I did get contacted by a company called Super Clean off, this, off my channel here. So they sent me some uh, free uh, cleaners and degreasers to use, uh, which you know I thank them for. I'll go ahead and just use a couple of the cleaners on this engine. Might as well get it cleaned up before I start working on it. Uh, but they did send me uh, kind of a pre-diluted degreaser. That's a sprayer and I got some foam super clean. They sent me a hat and t-shirt and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and use it on this engine. Uh, it's pretty crusty. Got a lot of dirt and stuff all over it. And then uh, I'll just kind of get it cleaned up so I can work on this a little easier. Homer, quick here. I'll let it soak for a few minutes. I'm gonna get uh, my compressor filled up because I'm gonna use that as a tool to help blow out all the debris in the fend areas. Uh, bottle of water, uh, make sure all your holes are closed off. I have my spark plug in. I close off the manifold with some saran wrap uh, and everything else should be good to go.
some uh, super clean degreaser, let it sit, uh, spray it down with a little bit of water, use a little scrub uh, bristle, bristle brush, and then uh, compress the air to get in all the nooks and crannies. So this engine's much cleaner. Now I can see what I'm working on. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, test for some spark. He sent me his coil. I have a known good coil that I always will test against everything with. So I got my six volt coil, spark plug. You can have a test light here to see your spark. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just test this. And then uh, instead of kicking it over, a non-impact style drill, 17 millimeter uh, socket for the nut on the flywheel, turn it counterclockwise. And the reason I use a non-impact is because uh, it will break that nut loose and untighten it. So a non-impact like a drill uh, won't do that. So first off in the inspection on the flywheel, uh, I'm going to look at the F mark on the flywheel. This is just how I do it because it always just works for me and it's an easy workflow. Is look for F mark, the firing mark on the flywheel. I'm going to inspect the point to make sure it starts to open roughly around the F mark, which this one is a little uh, behind the F mark, but it should give me some spark. And the uh, coil is still good and the uh, condenser is working. The point looks new, the condenser looks new. All right, so on these, basically all you need to do, let me zoom out on the, on the stator itself. This one's a Z50R, so all you have is the actual uh, main coil winding lead that goes to your uh, high tension coil for the spark plug. So I'm gonna use some alligator clips to connect it to my coil. And then get it to the coil feed line. You're going to need to ground out your actual coil, so we're going to take it on one of the frame mounts and I'll ground it off on a fin up here on my cylinder head. So you're grounding it back to, to the chassis, or in this case the engine, and uh, I'll just go ahead and use my coil light. I got spark. I can it's actually sparking my hand. So we have spark. I tested his coil too, just to make sure that he wasn't having problems with his coil, and that one gave me spark. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get everything ready to start and fire it up. I did the uh, valve adjustment. I have a video. I'll link it. I show thoroughly how to do it, so I'm not going to do it again in this video. Mounted up his Chinese carb. Uh, I'm not using an isolator at all. I'm just going ahead and getting it up to run and just testing it out. So you do need an isolator, heat isolator on these engines. This one, I don't have it. Just uh, making that clear. When I adjust my flywheel nut, make sure that's torqued down appropriately. Uh, make sure your oil level's good in here. For you to run your engine and uh, we'll go from there and if it fires up great if i don't get any kind of um, combustion then i'll go to the next step and that's when i'll i'll choose in my arrangement to do a compression test on it so until until i get to that stage i'm not doing a compression test just yet just about ready to uh, get this engine fired over i'll hook the gas line up from my hanging auxiliary tank uh, air filter I got a muffler on it, brand new spark plug, filled the oil up. So we'll prime the we'll prime the oil since this engine's been sitting for a while. I want to get some oil up to the top end. You could either pour some in from the tappet area and get some oil to drain down, or if you use your flywheel, 17 millimeter socket on a drill, we'll just get it to build some oil pressure. Uh, by rotating it counterclockwise for 30 seconds or so. And, I'll, and actually now that I'm doing that, 
you can, uh, I can test spark, obviously I tested spark with this, uh, but I can set timing with this, with the timing light without the engine ever running. So, you know, I'm going to get, if I were to do that, I could basically hook up my timing light into the spark circuit and rotate my RPM. You know, this is, this, this will spin at a reasonable RPM and I'll get my timing light to go off and I can see where I'm set from a uh, spark uh, standpoint so to visually uh, show you what I explained about using the timer so we're gonna look for that uh, illumination uh, we're watching for the where the F mark is just gonna show up on this flywheel so it's just free firing before top dead center here's my F mark it was firing about right there at that RPM that I was spinning it at so that's uh, before top dead center, since it's rotating counterclockwise. If it was on this side, we would be retarded. And on that side of the mark, that's advanced. All right, so I got my um, gas line reservoir all hooked up. I'm get ready to test this thing, kick it over. Turn on my fuel. I'm gonna make my adjustments on my carb here. Typically what I'll do is on the idle screw, which is this one that is in the very center line of your slide here. I'm going to turn that all the way in again, lock, gently lock it down. And then I'm going to turn it one, half, one and a half turns. So half, 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 that's one and a half. And this is the air, uh, this is the fuel screw, just mixture screw. I'll seat that back. Uh, need a smaller flathead to get in there. So I'm gonna seat that. I'm gonna go get a smaller flathead, and then I'm gonna turn that one out one and a half turns also. And that will be my baseline. Check the uh, timing there. Timing of this. Make sure that we are set up. It's gonna fire if it's healthy on the top end. I didn't do a leak down test. I didn't do a compression test. Uh, but I got the timing mechanically set. I verified the timing uh, from a firing standpoint, uh, from a coil standpoint. Uh, new carb on there. like to be meet some uh, gas or some um, some oil dripping out from the exhaust pipe on the top end so I did get off the phone uh, before I started this to refresh myself with the owner of what he did he put a new Chinese jug on with a piston he said he reused the cylinder head he didn't do any work on the cylinder head and he did put new uh, points and a condenser on there so like I said we verified verified spark um, and I noticed he had the jug. I don't know what piston is in there, if that's even correct or not for a compression, um, you know, correct dome piston. And now I don't even know uh, if the cylinder head is leaky or not based on the uh, valves, uh, seat conditions and such. All right, so I pulled the plug. It's got some oil on it and some gas, obviously. So I'm going to do a leak down test and a compression test real quick. Let's see what the uh, compression gauge says here. All right, so I get really no reading on the gauge. All right, leak down time. Zeroed out here. Start at zero here. here we're gonna plot this. This uh, hose is coming from the engine uh, spark plug board. So I got like immediately like a hundred percent issue here. All right, 
so I got a ton of leak coming out from the intake. Uh, that intake valve is not sealing at all. So uh, this engine is not going to run as it is. The next step is getting a new top end uh, installed on it and then uh, it should be good to run and um, send away back home. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this top end off the cylinder head because I just want to verify it's not something silly like a stuck valve uh, on the intake valve or something that I could possibly get to work again. What I'll do is I'll just take this 10 millimeter uh, head on this bolt here and unloosen it. We're going to knock off the uh, cam chain cover, the round cover, so I can get the cam chain sprocket taken off and loosen off the uh, chain. Nine millimeter for these three bolts. I'm going to loosen this as a paint chain tensioner access uh, bolt down here. It's 14 millimeters. I'm just going to loosen this tensioner and uh, reduce the tension on the chain. All right, 12 millimeter nut here on the chain tensioner lockdown pin. Back that off and then use your flathead to back the stud off and then that chain tensioner will drop down. I'm going to go ahead and lock it in place a little bit. bolt here that we're going to loosen up with a 10 millimeter. And then we got our acorn nuts that are the head studs and then the 10 millimeter. So as you guys notice on this, if you're looking straight at this engine, the lower left side gets the copper crush washer. That's your oil valley that brings all the oil from the bottom end through the oil pump. It comes up this stud and then circulates through the cam and then everywhere else. So that is the one that gets the crush washer. All the other studs get the steel. It's pretty corroded in there. Looks like the I'll have to do a closer look at everything. So here's a better look at the cylinder head, and of course we had that massive leak at the intake manifold on the leak down. Uh, this valve is bent. It's sitting up here on the outer edge of the dome. Uh, I'm sure the valve guide is shot, uh, so that's definitely our major issue there on the cylinder head. Uh, so just wanted to show you guys what the culprit was. You see how it doesn't even seat. It literally slides something underneath that valve and it's way over on the dome outer edge. And uh, you know the cam is deloaded. Rocker arms are free and uh, <clears throat> that valve still doesn't want to sit itself back. It's a low budget option. I'm going to use too fast moto. Uh, I got the uh, small dome or you know on the cylinder head later Z50R style jug and piston kit and then their matching uh, cylinder head that goes with it so uh, those prices are come out to about 95 bucks and that's shipped so I'll run that by the owner if he uh, next video I'll show what we kind of decided to go on and see they're gonna be this setup or rebuild the uh, factory cylinder head 
as far as I'm gonna take it on this video I'll get the parts ordered uh, by in you know by the direction of the owner which which way he wants to go based on his budget uh, I'll get all this stuff cleaned up put in the cooler again and then um, when I get the parts uh, shipped to me uh, we'll do the second part of the series getting this engine back up and running all right guys thanks for uh, watching please subscribe I'll see you later